Hello loves, friends and fools. Hey, so I'm coming to you today um, for a review. And um, it's been seven months, just a little bit over seven months since I started my first alchemy video in April. That was April 22nd this year, 2020, to share with my friends and family and loved ones and people that I care about. And yeah, I thought about that like a couple days ago. Yeah, it's time for that kind of a review. Um, if you've been watching or following me since the beginning, you'll understand a little bit about my process and about what I share. Um, maybe you'll have some insights into the metaphors that I use and um, creative expression and tools that are part of my alchemy play practice. And I'm coming today in costume to illustrate <laughs> some things, um, to express some things. And so I just, yeah, would like to share what this journey has been like for me, what I've experienced, and how I see it, how it's unfolded <laughs> through my being, through my ways of being, all my ways of being. That's fullness, integration, inclusivity. That's, I'm not hiding myself. I'm doing my best to be transparent. Um, what you see is what you get. <laughs> and it's up to you <laughs> what you get out of it, I think, you know? And so, yeah, what it really is, is just uh, my humble offerings. I'm committed and devoted to knowing me and knowing how to direct my energy and um, learning how to consciously engage and participate through all life's ways. And it's not a walk in the fucking park. <laughs> it's not when we face our shit, you know, we're willing to own it. And also like sift through all the garbage, you know, to reclaim the treasures and the gold hidden within it. And to also, um, know that the poison holds the remedy and uh, it's all part of the same thing it's just a matter of direction and degree and so what i want to say is every saint <laughs> has a past and every sinner has a future and it's kind of interesting how we project certain things that we don't like or that we do love and admire onto others and that's either so we don't need to look at our own shit or claim our own power and so I'm not yeah I'm gonna just try and define myself by what I'm not I'm gonna define myself or allow myself to be all I am for all I am showing up just as I am for all that I am and it's hard work you know like it takes guts and it takes heart to look at our shit and to go within and to be with it and it takes even more guts and even more heart and even more strength <laughs> to share it with vulnerably with others to show up and be a mess to show up and shine to show up and be all of it and so i just want to yeah remind Remind that we're all that. I am that I am that I am that I am. All that I am that I am that I am. All that I am that I am that I am. I am all this love. I know that I am. And so that's claiming all of my fullness. That's claiming my dark and my light. And both of those things, yeah, we haven't really understood what they are because we've seen them as separate and they're a part of each other. And so, yeah, I come to you with my devil horns and my angel wings on. And so this is part of my integration and my imagination at play. That's my creativity and my expression and all my ways of being. What I have been given to be by my creator. And, uh, yeah, becoming and being created. So a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. And so, um, it's been an awesome journey of discovery and awakening. Awakening is a continuous process. It's a continuous journey. It's a continuous journey that unfolds. 
and we discover and we learn as we go. And so um, those of you who are familiar with processes of, process of alchemy or sacred alchemy um, and the divine feminine wisdom and the arts of healing may have um, better understanding of where I'm coming from and how my process kind of works. But um, those of you who may not be familiar with some of these things, like how powerful metaphors and the word and um, our imagination is and can be, like maybe, maybe there is like a little bit of misinterpretation or misunderstanding, but that's okay too. Like I know I'm not gonna be everyone's cup of tea and that's okay and that's right for we, you know, like there's some things that we're just not going to like, or we're not going to vibe with, or we're not going to get, and that's okay. Like, but those things can show us like maybe where we're being a little bit rigid or maybe where, uh, we can look at our own preferences and prejudices and our own rigidities. And so, yeah, part of that is I'm a challenger. I'm going to challenge things and that is the devil. And so I will be a villain in someone's story but I will be an angel in someone else's story. And that's okay, like I can be it all, and I'll allow it all, and I'll free it all. And so let's pay attention <laughs> to how like, we're perceiving and how we may be seeing things on the outside and look a little bit deeper into that, um, into those ways of seeing. And what lens are we viewing from? And yeah, where are we coming from? Are we coming, are we looking um, outside from within? Are we looking from a lens that sources from outside of us or the lens of the judge and the victim? The lens of the judge, hero, victim. Hero, savior, judge, and victim. So those are the good things to look at. And yeah, my last video um, had some stuff come up that I was kind of, yeah not very clear on it. I've had some breakthroughs the last couple days and it hasn't been easy. Like, and it, there's been a lot of release, which has been great. Um, I had to cry a lot. I got to cry a lot. I got to release a lot and uncover a lot. So I'm grateful for that. Like just allowing it, getting out of my own way and letting myself uh, feel sad and grieve for many things or just allowing what was stuck or held in my body to be moved through me without being attached to a story or to um, my feelings that maybe have been like ways for me to shield myself in certain ways, um, certain stories that are attached <laughs> or that I attach, that my ego attaches uh, to certain feelings, certain stories that my ego attaches to certain feelings, yes. And so, yeah, that's interesting to look at too. And I just wanted to review, yeah, um, why I'm sharing my journey and a little bit about alchemy and a little bit about like different stories that we have, different stories that influence our ways of thinking, perceiving and believing and like becoming aware of those stories and those voices and those aspects that do play big roles and parts in consciousness, in unconsciousness or um, survival strategies like that we may not be aware of or that we could be aware of um, in certain ways but not fully and um, yeah where to begin because there's so much to it and <laughs> so much in it so um, I'll just tell you a little bit about alchemy and what it means to me and I've been working with uh, divine alchemy and sacred alchemy um, very consciously for the last um, four years and um, actually gotten so much out of it this year. <laughs> it's like the last three years were to help me with this year because there's been so much in it, potency and so many things to uh, 
alchemize and transmute and neutralize and integrate or just realize be with and sort through understand get to know and let go of release and let go of or redirect in some certain way so it is like all about play and integration it's not something that we have to beat out of ourselves or pound out of ourselves it's something we just get to be curious about and understand and so we can know ourselves and harmonize um, all the parts of ourselves um, so they work for us and um, not against us in certain ways so alchemy alchemy is based on the egyptian alchem chem or alchem a mixture to create chem is to form a primary substance alchemy is a process of blending the parts of the whole until a fusion is achieved alchemy is a process of reordering reorganizing refortifying purifying synthesizing and unifying the whole turning the base metals into gold Alchemy is not merely an art or a science to teach metallic transmutation so much as a true and solid science that teaches how to know the center of all things, which in the divine language is called the spirit of life. Pierre Jean Fabre. <laughs> it's French. <laughs> I'm not very good sometimes with, yeah, with enunciation or, or all of that pronunciation, but that's all right. I'll play my weaknesses and my potentials and my gifts and my strengths, all of it, because that's what makes us human and full, and that's why we're all fools. So the fool, the fool is the zero and the tarot and the tarot. Um, uh, the fool holds everything but is nothing. And so it's good to look at that. The fool is also God, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. And so the container all therein. Alchemical union is the synthesis of the self, the inner marriage, holy union, freedom, wholeness, unity, consciousness, and the ecstatic embodiment of the soul. The culmination of shamanic initiation, awakened consciousness, and integration of the emotional forces that are key for living in harmony. The magical art of fusion within the psyche and our creative energy fields. The marriage of love, wisdom, and power. The harmonic merging of opposing forces, rebirth of the divine child and the self. That's um, something I wrote down a couple years ago when I was just deciding to make boards with all these colorful markers and stuff. I'll show it to you if you'd like to see. There's this little colorful board just to help remind me. I put like stuff like this in my space. And it just like, it's kind of funny how like it just pops up when I need it and like to help remind me and activate something within um, to help me on my journey and my discovery and my process of awakening and discovering who I am and who I get to be and uh, my part and my um, legitimacy, my um, my center of me and my place in the scheme of everything and the whole of all things. So, alchemy is the synthesis of the self. To synthesize means to create a compound by combining various elements. The compound represents a new whole that could not have come together unless the individual elements were put together and combined. A synthesis results in something new coming into being that has a quality of wholeness all its own much like a quality recipe or the act of conception. And integration is the organization of the psychological or social traits and tendencies of a personality into a harmonious whole. Integration is a positive psychological development that indicates psychological maturity and may help an individual move past negative habits. And so, yeah, that's why I've allowed myself to go deep into um, my shit and to allow like the expression of all of it in healthy, creative, um, cre yes, creative ways rather than my old patterns of destructive ways because that didn't serve me at all and I had to go through a lot of pain 
So in order to learn that, like that I'm my own friend and not my own enemy, but I can be both. I can be my worst enemy and I can be my best friend. So I choose to be a friend and an ally to me. And I choose to also know my enemy and know thy enemy so I can understand like what kind of power I um, get to reclaim and uh, how to direct my energy in more authentic, true, harmonious, honoring ways, loving ways for that self-love and like um, for growth. Yeah. Honoring it all. So honoring it all, allowing it all, playing with like all of these things that come up through in certain ways, um, through our psyche, um, through our ways of being, um, through the inner and the outer, inner, the inner stage and the outer stage. So life is a play and uh, yeah, we're all the players, you know? God's a player in this whole play, um, playing all these different parts, playing through all ways, through all our ways. And so, yeah, it's helpful to look at it in certain ways or through, <laughs> through all these ways through different perspectives. And um, just wanted to share a little bit about uh, the psyche. What is the psyche? It's the totality of all psychic processes, conscious and unconscious. And so we all have a psyche. Yeah. And so we're all psychic, but we may not be able to access or tap into our psychic awareness, like fully. There's that to look at. So Carl Jung believed that the psyche was a self-regulating system, rather like a body, one that seeks to maintain a balance between opposing qualities while constantly striving for growth, a process called individuation. So individuation, it's to refer to the process by which a person becomes a psychological individual, a separate indivisible unity or whole. Individuation comes from the Latin word individuum, meaning the indivisible. The individuation process, the psyche's push toward bringing unconscious material into consciousness for the development of the self. Our immature personality is the prima materia, the base matter which needs, uh, through conscious effort, through alchemy, um, and then individuation, to be transformed into golden knowing, symbolized by the philosopher's stone. So individuation is a process, not a realized goal. Typically, the stages repeat over and again and again as we grapple with issues and gain insight, inner knowledge over time. So it's not something to arrive at. We're constantly changing. We're constantly growing. We're constantly discovering new things. And like that's the magic of life and the magic of being. And it's not static and it's not just one way. So let's let go of some of those rigidities and realize it is through all ways, through all ways of all our ways of being through all our unique and individual and collective <laughs> ways of operating and being. So um, Carl Jung saw the psyche as something that could be divided into component parts with complexes and archetypal contents personified in a metaphorical sense and functioning like secondary selves that contributed to the whole. His concept of the psyche includes the ego, the personal unconscious, complexes, uh, the collective unconscious, the self, the persona, the shadow, the anima, and the animus. And so archetypes, I've been working with the archetypes, obviously. If you've been watching my videos, I mention them every time or very, very frequently because I see them come up in so many ways, through so many ways on the inner and the outer stage. So archetypes are patterns of influence that are both ancient and universal. They become quite personalized when they are part of an individual psyche. The most advantageous way to think of them is as intimate companions. The nature of our archetypes is both intimate and impersonal. Viewed through the heart, they are personal enough to be called companions. Viewed through the mind, they are impersonal symbolic patterns that serve in the energetic organization of our spiritual evolution. That's a quote by Caroline... Caroline niece um, and her book sacred contracts and so archetypes archetypes 
comes from the Greek origin, uh, archaean, which means old or original, and typos, which means pattern. So it means original pattern of which all other patterns or other similar persons, objects, concepts, motifs are derived, copied, and emulated. Carl Jung believed that universal mythic characters, archetypes, reside within the collective unconscious. Archetypes are the structures of the psyche. They represent fundamental human motifs, characteristics, traits, codes, themes, and patterns of our experience as we evolve. Jung defined archetypes as definite forms in the psyche that seem to be present always and everywhere. He described them as an original model of a person ideal example of a prototype upon which others are copied, patterned, or emulated, a symbol universally recognized by all. In psychology, an archetype is a model of a person, personality, or behavior. It's helpful to, to be aware of the archetypes at play within oneself and others, in the individual and the whole or the collective, in order to gain personal insight into behaviors, drives, patterns, dynamics, motivations, to navigate in a more empowered way or like to help us change, to help us change and um, shift um, some of these patterns, some of these old patterns, or uh, yeah, synthesize, purify, um, redirect like this energy to form new patterns. So yeah, because my last video I was uh, speaking about, it's all about patterns and relationships and dynamics and cycles and like, and structures. Um, and yeah, so that's what I've been working with for the last couple of years. And I, and I think it's incredible really, um, just what it's opened up for me, like choosing to do this work and answering the call. Um, and not everyone's going to get it and that's all right. Like it's not for everyone. It's, and it's definitely not for the faint of heart or for those who aren't ready to look at their own bullshit and claim their own power and to be full and to show up and be vulnerable and, uh, claim that power because with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. So like it isn't. <laughs> It isn't uh, easy, but it's got so much, um, so much potency in it, and it does feel so right, and it feels authentic, and there's nothing I'd rather be choosing for myself than to work on and to play with myself, like, really, like, and to receive myself and to honor myself, my whole self, not just this little self, this little equal self, but all that I'm a part of, all that I am. And all that I get and will be, all that I get to be and I shall be, yeah. And so, like, just honoring, like, what's now, what's been, and what will be, and allowing, like, all of this love that we get to experience and create through being. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to share today. Um, looking at like a lot of things and I, I yes I did have some breakthroughs about like the themes that were coming up <laughs> last time and I yeah it's just amazing what happens in just a couple days um, when we're willing to get out of our own way and just play and just and be receptive um, and ask for help and um, surrender agendas and so like yeah, I don't really know what wants to be shared about that because there's so much, but I did, yeah, I did get some insight into my dreams and into my inner conflicts that, um, that I was kind of ex feeling and experiencing, um, through certain ways, like that had to do with communication and understanding and, um, what masks that we wear and roles that we play and perceptions um, and how those perceptions are colored uh, by the lenses that we choose or that we're unconscious of um, that relate to our core belief systems and um, the way that we see ourselves and others and the world and our place in it. And so um, I just flipped open to this page here. Um, 
yeah, all the space that we've made lately, I've changed up my space again, and it's felt really good. Um, it seems like a lot of us are going through that transition and kind of doing like a purge sort of order, reordering reset in our own spaces, in our own homes. And it is like all about the heart and the hearth and the home right now. <laughs> so I've got like a lot of symbols behind me that represent the heart and all of that. And yeah, it is about, our, that's our, that's our new home. That's our home. It's our heart, you know, home is where the heart is. So home is the heart. Yeah, and home is where we are. If we're home within ourselves, you know. So um, I'm just gonna let you guys see. Like I've got like a little picture behind the I love you, and it's two hearts joined together. Yeah, and blooming and shining. And then um You can see this little soul collage that I have here. I know there's a glare, but can you see the mirrors? There's the dragon's eye, and there's the it's a mirror, and then also Mary's heart. Mary's heart is the mirror. So looking into or looking in through the truth of the heart, the truth of the matter. Um, to see through the eyes, to see through the lens of love, to unify the whole, to harmonize the opposing forces that are part of the whole, that are one part of each other and a legit part of the whole. That's what I've been working on for a, <laughs> for a while now. And uh, like knowing that it's already, that we're already whole, that we're already all we are. And just realizing that and uh, applying that and practicing that. Realizing, discovering, and knowing, becoming that, embodying that. So, since it is a time for review, um, for my in bulk uh, circle this year, which was in February, yeah, February 2nd. Uh, it was at the beginning of the year. This is just a little whiteboard that I had. Um, uh, people that, my loved ones who showed up for that um, little circle to gather together um, this the beginning of the year to write one word that would help uh, remind us this year um, what to focus on or how to, if, to come back to our center and refocus. And those words like have helped me all year. I've kept it in certain in, in my space, and then I yeah I remember. So that was freaking awesome. But good reminders and everything. So the words are rise, love, and shine, flow, strength, and receptivity. And those were some perfect words that everyone contributed. Um, the group contributed. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been working with all of those what they mean to me, those qualities this year. Um, the horror has been coming up a lot for me, like I said last time. And so I got this little cross stitch out that my husband did a couple years ago. Horror, sweet horror. Just make friends. Make friends with those parts uh, that show us like where we can be more true to ourselves, where we can honor ourselves more fully, where we can realize um, where we might be selling ourselves short or um, disowning our power, giving away our power. Not, or or maybe not honoring our, our power or our fullness um, through all of our ways of being, um, maybe in favor of safety, belonging, security, and I understand like why we do, why we choose, or why we unconsciously fall <clears throat> into those strategies, you know, like we've been trained and that's just like all in old patterns, old patterns, old ways of being. Um, and we can like 
begin to see those things <clears throat> through our relationships, through the relationships that we have with ourselves and through the relationships that we have with others. And those things will pop up, yeah, in our space to help us realize and help us know and help us redirect and help us discover or um, remember like what we want to create and help us see in certain ways what's no longer working or what's working or like what's working for us <laughs> and what's working through us you know all of those all of those ways through all those ways of being and relating and operating cooperating playing out and through and in, in out and through our ways of being so it's true <laughs> And it's up to you, yeah. If it resonates, awesome. If you get it, great. If you don't, great. <laughs> and it's all right. And so, yeah, I'm talking about space, making space, making a room. Is there room to be all of it? So, can we be nothing? <laughs> Two. All, everything, and nothing. All, everything, one, and nothing. <laughs> Interesting conversations and reflections, contemplations, the busy, be the busy beavers that we are. We've gotten so much done, done in a week. We've just about rearranged the whole house. Every single room has gone through so many transformations, transformations and changes. So, and I also like that's like one of my favorite metaphors is like the home or the the, the house, like to represent our psyche and our being. Like there's so many different rooms. So many different aspects and some aspects we're very familiar with some rooms we just love to be in because they feel so great some rooms we don't really avoid or we just throw a bunch of junk in there and close the door and just like kind of <laughs> wait till we actually get around to clearing it or <laughs> just like sorting through like the different things that we've like just shoved in there and so sometimes we find treasure in there and sometimes it's like a whole bunch of shit that's like man maybe this needs to be released now or maybe it gets to be released now or maybe um it's time for it to re to be repurposed or to take on um or to have like new life breathe into it or to pass it on to someone else <laughs> or yeah upcycle it or um yeah yeah release it Make it into something else, <laughs> redirect it, um, maybe just, yeah, purge and, and let it fall away, like in just those kinds of ways, like just looking at things, like in simple little ways, like and it just, I think the home and the house and the mansion is a perfect metaphor for all we are. There's so many different parts <laughs> that relate to the whole, that are a legit part of the whole. And so we do have our own like little favorite rooms we like to spend time in that we're really like familiar with or that, yeah, we, um, yeah, they just have like their own certain energies and qualities and like um, uh, part in the whole. And uh, then there's other rooms that maybe we've never explored before or that we forgot about. Like I used to have this recurring dream when I was young where it would just be um, like this huge house with all of these secret passageways and all of these hidden rooms. And um, just when I thought like I'd explored the whole house, there'd be other rooms that I'd never even seen before. And it was interesting like to explore and just, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy like um, an infinite like portal of like expansion and just discovery so and that's like yeah who we are and thank you God like for all we are and for this discovery and for this this magic um, knowing or an experiencing and playing and realizing like who we really are, remembering that through all our ways. Yeah. 
So it's funny, so much space is opened up and it frees up room in every room in the whole house. Funny how it all relates and creates the fullness of our home and our creativity, fertility, possibilities, joy, abilities. Seems like everyone is transitioning in one way, form, or another, or our individual and collective on our individual and collective journeys. Oh yeah, so a couple days ago, um, I was going through my old journal, um, my, my dream journal from the beginning of the year, and um, looking at my looking at a, my first entry of a dream that I had written um, in January, and it had to do with bear, and it had to do with an old childhood family home, and certain dynamics in the family system and it related to the dream that I shared in my last video because there was the same two males in it and I thought that was super interesting and it had to do with yeah um, roots and reclaiming um, power that I was afraid to claim but I did rise up and I did engage and I did choose to face my fears and uh, and then it wasn't, yeah, scary anymore. It was kind of, it was really funny. I'll, I'll, um, I'll share that next time about that. But like, I think it's really interesting because Bear is one of my totems, and it does, she, she does relate to the the root chakra and to the mother and to the womb and the cave. And um, yeah, she's been showing up lately in so many ways. And I thought that was just kind of funny. Like, I just kind of had an impulse to pick up my dream journal and open it. And of course, like. Sometimes, like, yeah, I don't know how, <laughs> how, <laughs> like, it's through the mystery, man, and just intuition and just getting out of our own way, the body's own intelligence, letting the body, like, <laughs> and the, yeah, our own irrational intelligence operate, like, um, cooperate, um, and be honored to help show us things, that's our own inner gui guidance, you know, like, and, yeah, getting out of my own way, and just, yeah, super awesome um, to be able to like receive those things and be open to those things. Um, so yeah, I was praying and and releasing and grieving and forgiving um, a lot of the pain that I was feeling and. Um, got to cry and it did help my eyes because my eyes were kind of buggy a couple days ago but I just needed a really 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 good cry and relief and that's what I got to give myself and allow for myself and just let it be yeah without without being sucked into like certain stories or having to refuel or um, feed yeah like um, certain old beliefs or feelings about um, what was coming up and what was being released so it, it felt really good <laughs> to let myself feel sad and to allow myself to let go, you know, and just express it and um, move, move it, let it move through. So, um, so I said feeling a little sad, but it's part of joy too. Feelings of depression coming up to be seen. What is it that I can offer to me? Love, allowance, compassion, patience, permission to grieve and feel all I feel to be here with me and we. Endurance, fortitude, and permission to let go of all I can't or don't need to control. Surrendering all and responding as best as I can to love's inner call. To meet me with love. To fold, carry, release, free, love all. Um, yeah. Praying for love and forgiveness and understanding. Praying for love all of us family praying for goodness love beauty peace acceptance praying for love and all of our healing praying for opening softening flowing praying for kindness and new ways of seeing praying for all of us and our true well-being 
praying for love to help us see clearly, to hold us and keep us through this revealing, unraveling being, unfolding through God's love and all her ways of healing. Art is life, art as life, through our ways of being, becoming, dreaming, living. This is a soul collage card that um, was on the top of my stack of cards, and I didn't really, it was before I started releasing and stuff, but it's perfect uh, for me. I don't know what it means to you or what you can see about that, but for me, it definitely is uh, going within and uh, practicing deep inquiry and being willing and being receptive and grieving. Um, she's got a skull and a book in her lap. And yeah, she's looking up and pointing to her third eye. So um, she, there's a circle and there's a cave and there's a tree and there's solidity and the feelings, yeah, that I have about this, like with the burgundy on the corners and the blue of the sky and the brown of the cave or the earth and the blue of her robes and the red of her hair. Yeah, it's all meaningful to me. And just this picture, this is like pure vulnerability and authenticity and receptivity and a willingness to be with all of it and to, and to, to make peace with all of it through feeling and releasing and being and allowing that grief and the beauty, the joy, the pain, honoring all of it, being with all of it. willing to meet all of it and know that it's all part of the whole anasa for our for our growth and our wholeness and our integrity and our fullness and our well-being to integrate and honor it all and I wrote a little piece about that um, last night mm. There's my Kleenex behind me. <laughs> um, let go of the story. Okay. <laughs> I crack myself up. So remembering neutrality and not taking things or others' reactions, responses, prejudice, and preferences personally or so very seriously, because really it's a dance, a game, a play, um, a stage for us to discover all our ways and claim our fullness, weaknesses, limitations, potentials, and strengths, gifts for all in the whole scheme of things. Life is beautiful, terrible, and amazing through all our sorrows, joys, triumphs, and pain. Embrace the fullness and reclaim all of me, we, fully. I am perfectly imperfect through all of these ways, a work in progress and a masterpiece. We are always growing, knowing. Uh, we are always growing, learning, changing, holding, unfolding, letting go, and becoming, discovering, awakening, dancing, moving, integrating, remembering, forgetting, and reclaiming. Awakening is a continuous journey, a continuous process of discovery, being, and becoming all we are and will be. So can I allow what I don't like? Can I allow it to be or let it teach me or show me um, what I can give, allow, receive, and be for me? What I get to choose or honor, notice, um, and receive for me, my growth, expansion, and accountability, and my, uh, my awakening to deeper parts of me that I haven't or hadn't fully realized yet or embodied or expressed consciously 
Um, and there's so much around this that wants to be received, honored, expressed, and seen, realized more fully in love's clarity of unity, receptivity, and inclusivity through all our ways of being we, always. So let go of the story of what I can't be and define myself or refine my craft through all my ways of being, through who I am, through all I am, rather than who I'm not or what I'm not or who I'm at playing at being. So let go of the attachments to certain perceptions or the limited spectrum of old false beliefs based on the lies of separation and fragmentation. Life is an actualization and fractalization of our creative imagination and conscious participation. Sometimes I think my need to dissect and understand comes from a desire to fix uh, or pretend to comfort or control perception or to help someone else understand, see or realize my interpretations and my perspectives, uh, ways of seeing and expressing me and my feelings, my reality, what I'm experiencing and wanting to find out where and how it all relates so we can better communicate, relate, and seek a new, deeper understanding. And the way I am, uh, or I really, let's see, oh, the way that I roll really, I don't really, if I don't like something that I see, I don't really waste my energy or feel like the need to complain or condemn by putting, um, like, yeah, some kind of uh, comment on someone else's page or thread, uh, I just move on to something else. Like, I'm just like, nah, that's not for me. Like, and so, it, yeah, sometimes it's like, why do we, like, feel so entitled sometimes? And, like, why is it never enough or is it's too much for us? Like, like, let's look at those things. Let's challenge our own rigidities. Let's challenge our own prejudices. I mean, it's fine for us to like what we like and to not like certain things because we're not meant to like everything. It's like an electromagnetic force, electromagnetic force. Like we're going to be drawn and attracted to some things and we're going to be like repelled to some of those things. But like, can we some, you know, like it's helpful to look sometimes about like, ooh, why does this repel me so much? And sometimes it is like an insult to our soul, but sometimes it can point to a wound of some kind that's asking for healing or some kind of rejected, uh, denied aspect of ourselves that's really asking for love and integration or for attention. And then like it gets projected on the outside of us sometimes and we see it in someone else and we condemn it and we say, no, I don't like that. And no, that's wrong. And like, yeah. And sometimes we project like the things that we love and admire onto someone else and because we want them to hold and carry um, and shine that for us because yeah, that's convenient too, like for to have a hero to, to hero worship and live vicariously through like certain themes, certain stories um, and not um, being accountable for our own power. And so those are good things to look at. Um, and yeah, it's fine for us to disagree, but does it really empower we if we're always competing, keeping score, measuring, comparing, and nitpicking about what's not perfect enough or good enough for our sensibilities, our refined sensibilities. And are we really that fragile according to our ego stories? Like, hmm, what's so fragile here? Hmm. Why do I feel so threatened when I'm challenged? You know, like, let's look at that too. Like, maybe we can't tell the difference between a challenge and a threat anymore because we're so, our ego's so damn fragile. You know, like, I know it's all falling apart and it's all unraveling, but, like, that's part of it, too. And so, like, that's where we get to reclaim our heart and, like, our center, recenter ourselves, you know, through, through the heart. So, or, um, so that we can't allow other ways of being, seeing, learning, and perceiving others' um, experiences. Challenging rigidities, indeed. <laughs> so, yeah. That's where um, yeah, the dream that I shared last time, the wound that goes deep, but is showing me all I need to see about and around these archetypal themes at play. And so it was kind of like a child parent dynamic and it was like, it had to do with my forearm. So I'm going to look more into that about the forearm and it had to do with family, family dynamics and family patterns. And it also had to do with like a desire to please, but like a desire for acknowledgement and understanding and like freedom to be. And like, those were my, like, I 
original inner conflicts uh, that I had been, have been working through this year. Um, like, you can't please everyone. That's impossible. Like, and not even try. Like, <laughs> like uh, it's so exhausting. And so, like, it's like I'm letting go of the need to be pleasing or to be pleased. And, like, I'm taking it all, um, yeah, as it comes. And, yeah, letting go of certain old preconceived notions, um, myths, beliefs, and stories. And so challenging my own and challenging others too, like, because that's who I am. And I'm an empath and I've discovered recently, like in the last year and a half, that I'm a Hayoka. And those empaths reflect and project uh, the parts of ourselves that we either love, admire, um, we love and admire, or that we don't like and uh, we condemn and reject or deny about ourselves. And so like, if I get to be the villain in your story, I guess I, <laughs> that's what I get to be, because I'm gonna be a villain and uh, certain stories and I'm going to be the hero and the angel and yeah that player in someone else's story so like yeah it's just interesting to see um, those things those reflections and projections and so um, allowance and permission to be to be free to be listened to held and received I can offer this love to me and we through receiving all I need for me and respond more fully and consciously. So where am I driven or being driven unconsciously by something on the outside of me? Am I looking for something or someone on the outside of me to approve, validate, and care for me, save, rescue, or understand me? So what am I avoiding or dismissing or disallowing, rejecting, projecting, judging, devaluing, or condemning? And I realized today that the wound was the size of a cigarette, like, or a cigarette burn. So that's kind of interesting, like the same width and length almost like the size of a cigarette, like it's kind of strange. So what's gotten under my skin? And so I realize I'm very disappointed with those following orders or not seeing the big picture. And that stems from expectations, ideals and resentments, unconscious projections and idealized perceptions, implanted beliefs of perception, projection, perfection, expecting others to be as we need or want them to be so that we can be comfortably cared for um, or live vicariously through false images, myths, lies, and stories. Okay, thanks Epicure, thanks Idealist, Perfectionist, and Saboteur. It's time to upgrade, level up, and reclaim all that's yours, all that's ours. Starting with owning yourself, myself, my responsibility, my power, and my freedom to be. And so that's just like little snippets of things, yeah, that has come to me in the last few days. And yeah, it's really helped me, yeah through this process of alchemy and um, yeah seven months ago I yeah I can see the changes and I can see the growth and the expansion <laughs> that's unfolded and uh, yeah manifested so it makes me humble and grateful uh, to see like in certain ways like um, with insight uh, and hindsight like knowing, like getting little glimpses in the beginning, what it really was going to be, but then actually see it unfolding. And then, and now like, uh, yeah, as these months have gone by and we've gotten through, like, <laughs> yeah, gone through all these changes and transformations and transitions and uh, our, in our process and journey of awakening it is really freaking wow. Just huge, like to see, like, how like how it all relates <laughs> and uh yeah what a gift it really is so yeah I, i'm feeling like yeah i can show up and i can be myself and like what's been really great for me in a lot of ways is to, sh to show up and be myself to be myself to show up as i am uh there's a lot of things that i have healed that i haven't shared like um in detail with really anyone but I want to share just a little bit uh, of where I have been where I was and where I am now um, so coming to you to like and putting these uh, videos of vulnerability transparency and accountability on YouTube 
is huge for me, like to show up in those ways, especially coming like naked face, naked bare face and vulnerable, uh, transparent, authentic, uh, raw, messy, as I am full. Um, it's been a huge, huge, huge deal for me to be able to do that. Um, years and years ago and through my uh, late teens and early 20s and early 30s, I suffered with uh, body dysmorphic disorder and um, uh, I had such a distortion of myself, of, of who I was or of how I looked or how I appeared. I could never get it right. I could never ever get it right. I wasn't ever enough. It wasn't ever enough or it was way too much. And so, yeah, I did have like certain OCD like behaviors and um, things like were, it really did get in the way of me showing up in so many ways. Um, and it was like a hyper fixation on appearance and like how it was supposed to look and how it was supposed to seem, how it was supposed to feel and be. And always trying to manage like all of that, like to make it comfortable for the other and me. And that was like really exhausting. And it just, yeah, it was a lie and a story. But like, yeah, um, in one example I want to share, it was, I would spend hours and hours and hours in front of the mirror, grooming, trying to make my makeup as perfect as it could be because there was some kind of idealized perception of like what I wanted or needed to look like in order to be accepted and like yeah like it just it was like almost there just almost there just not not perfect enough not not like if I spent one more minute maybe I could get that wing right or maybe I could get that like the eye like right or whatever and so in certain ways it's been like a really awesome gift for me to show up without makeup on when I wore it for like uh, more than half of my life and being naked face the last like uh, two years really, like not wearing makeup, choosing like to go like, it was like a 180 where I'd, like, I'd always have to have makeup on, like no matter if I was going anywhere or not, like I had to have like my mask of <laughs> this, this persona or this, this, this being who was worthy of this love and admiration and whatever I was hungry for, um, acceptance. You know, um, so yeah, um, seeing myself in different ways and knowing that I can show up just as I am um, in all my perfectly imperfect ways and knowing that um, my inner beauty shines through for those who are willing to see and I can, you know, and I can see it and that's what's important to me now. Like I couldn't see it before. I, I didn't believe it or didn't realize it before. Like, just how beautiful like, and amazing like my true self is. And that's what she wanted to show me. That I don't need anything outside of me to already be what I am, to be all I am. To be true to who I am. And to be accepted. To accept myself. To accept me as I am. So if I can do that, like, I can do anything. If I can accept myself as I am, I can accept life as she is. Like, I always like love, loved, loved, loved the, all the goddess and all she is. Like, for all she is, like she can be beautiful, terrible, and amazing because that's just who she is. But like for myself, I didn't allow that. The beautiful, terrible, and amazing. I know that it's all right. And so I'm really grateful, like for being like where I am, as I am, for all I am. So those are huge things uh, that I've been able to integrate, harmonize, synthesize, alchemize, yeah, through looking at stories, through looking at my pain, through looking at the things that I rejected and denied and uh, got to reclaim. And so I'll be the villain or I'll be the devil or I'll be the angel. I'll be all of it because I, I hold all of that <laughs> and I yeah it's all part of it I need all of it to be full to be whole to be true and to grow like you know so 
it all relates to the whole. So thank you for listening. Um, yeah. Where can we challenge ourselves? Where can we allow ourselves? What can we offer ourselves? What can we offer each other? What can we acknowledge? Um, what can we release? What can we forgive? And who can we be? Who do we get to be? Who do we choose to be? Who are we? <laughs> yeah. Who do we get to choose to be for ourselves, for others, for all of we? You know. Yeah. Good things to look at. And through all our ways of being and perceiving, receiving, manifesting, creating, and retrieving, like soul retrieval. Just, yeah, remembering and knowing ourselves, remembering who we are, and uh, applying and practicing and embodying and integrating the wisdom, you know, that we find on our journey. So it is hard work, and it, and, but it's like, it's easy too. Like there is ease, grace, um, and strength available. And so, yeah, it's just amazing, like, almost reminds me of like the process of birth, like where it's so intense and it is like a life and death situation. Um, and there's so much joy, beauty, pain, strength in that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the bridge between both worlds too. Like, yeah, and all of that just well, kind of blows my mind in a way. Like, yeah, the power in that, um, in that creative process. So, yeah, happy alchemy, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Um, yeah, let's count our blessings and um, let's let's also count ourselves <laughs> in there too, and uh, our our growth and and all we've been through, our triumphs and our and our small and large victories and our struggles. Let's acknowledge those too because there's gold in that. Um, yeah, for us to find and for us to be with, for us to choose. So I love you all, sending many blessings, and uh, yeah, love you as you are, and for all that you are, for all that we are. Okay, be well. Okay, talk to you next time. <laughs>